Good evening, everyone. Very nice to be here. Terrifying to follow Charlie as another architect, but here we go. Um, my name is Rod Hughes, and I'd better start the presentation, I suppose. That would be a good idea. There we go. Um, I'm director of 2030 Architects. We formed in 2009. Um, I presented a paper to the first International Green Building Conference in 1992, which sounds ter terrible. And I've been committed to sustainable design ever since. Sadly, I've never quite got to the, the stage of building until this year. We are now committed to a different level of sustainability. And I'd endorse everything that Charlie said. Um, we're trying to generate uh, buildings which are regenerative in their design approach. They cover all the things that Charlie mentioned, place, water, energy, materials, health and happiness, equity and beauty. That, that's our response to the climate emergency. Um, and I'm pleased that the UK government has finally made a, a commitment. It remains to be seen what the policies will actually give us. But uh, that's enough of that. Here we go then. Self-build. A journey of choice. Because designing a building involves an awful lot of choice. There are a multitude of decisions to make. Um, from fundamental things like the size, the cost, the siting, the structure, negotiating a planning permission, that's easy, uh, through to the choice of doorknobs, whether to have skirting boards or not, which particular shade of anthracite grey you're going to use on your window frames. Uh, so I thought tonight we'll just, we'll just concentrate on four, four things. Um, the site. Um, our company obviously focuses very much on the carbon footprint of the building. That's, that's our fundamental paradigm in a design. That does not mean that we ignore the context of the site or the client's brief or the budget, far from it. What it means is that every design decision is informed by the need to reduce dependency on fossil fuels. I'm just repeating what Charlie said. Um, what we're trying to achieve is life-enhancing buildings. Quality has been mentioned earlier. That's what it's about. It's about creating quality buildings, and that's what we do. So, 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 thank you. The site, often the starting point for a self-builder. Uh, you, you will, of course, have been, you, you'll have that definitive list of the features you want on your site. Uh, so that you can narrow your search and make that all-important decision at the auction or the offer to the estate agent. Finally, after months, years, possibly even decades in some cases, you've found that perfect site or plot or dilapidated barn. You'll be excited. You'll be desperate to secure the land. You can picture yourself sitting out in the garden with your bottle of Chablis, enjoying the, the fruits of your labour. You want to get the best out of your investment. You want an amazing design, you want a, an economic builder, and you want to be finished by Christmas. Why do they always want to be finished by Christmas? Um, a good design will respond to the context of the site. It will deal with the constraints that you're under and exploit the opportunities. And every site is different, which is presumably why you're self-building and not buying a developer's house product. Um, but perhaps we're getting a little bit ex ahead of ourselves. A couple of things to consider when I finally get the button to work. So, site, so that sounds, sounds obvious, drainage. Um, mm, it's absolutely fundamental in allowing development to take place. Um, we have two current projects which may fail, um, which seems odd. One is within metres of a sewer. You'd think, yeah, what's the problem? But it may not be able to connect to the surface water. It's a combined sewer, and it may not be able to connect economically. Um, unfortunately, the rest of the site is rock, so we can't percolate any surface water. Job could be dead. Um, fortunately, we've been involved very early on, and they're checking that situation out before they purchase the site. Another site has a, an existing failing septic tank, so everyone thought it was working, but it actually isn't. Um, it's next to a river, which is a triple SI, and we've got to cross somebody else's land to get the discharge, which we may or may not be able to do. So again, uh, it's pretty fundamental. If you can't drain the site, you can't build. Sounds obvious. Second thing on a site. Access. Easy. You know, you've got a road, no problem. Uh, but highways do have some unfortunate mandatory standards that they insist on. The fact that you need to be driving safely and see entrances and not speed too fast past your, your new development site. Um, also, probably more importantly, how does the contractor get to the site? Um, that 
bridge access is actually a real site access, which does complicate the design somewhat. But if you know about that, that informs the design decisions going forward. Uh, you design the scheme and the, uh, the transportation system to, to cope with that. Uh, I won't tell you what we use there, but it involved four legs at one point. Um, uh, so the next, the next little, little trick. So the ground sounds obvious again. It's, it's something you should check. Uh, what are the ground conditions? Um, is it rock? Is it boulder clay? Is it sand surrounded by trees on a slope? Does it have a high water table? Probably, yes. Is it in a flood risk area? Certainly uh, quite a few of those around in Cumbria. All of these factors can affect the foundation design um, and the building structure. And we've had a case recently where the foundation costs alone exceeded £60,000. Um, on a single detached house with an overall budget of only £450,000. And that was after the cost savings um, of the redesign of the, of the foundations from the original estimate, which was £100,000, which scared everyone, including us, uh, because no one, no one had anticipated that. Um, we were stuck with the site because it was, a, it was a flooded site and we were having to build in that position, so there was no, there was no room to... Uh, negotiate out of it. But as part of the fundamental design decisions going forward, we, we managed to develop this house. And the client is very happy in living in it. But now, the big one, the brief, the one we've been all, all been waiting for, absolutely critical to the success of a design process. You need to communicate what you're trying to achieve in order for the architect to respond with the, his experience, her experience, and imagination to create your dream home. We, we need to know why, why you're building. What, what are your imperatives? Is it your dream home? Is it an investment? Um, is it a commercial development? These priorities inform, and these priorities are more, inform the design decisions going forward. We need more than a simple list of rooms. Often we get a brief which is just a, a list. Um, it's a good start. Um, sketches are helpful. Pinterest, scrapbooks, even better. But a house is an emotional experience. Um, ideally, we want to know how you want to feel in your new house. We need to know how you, how you want to live in the spaces we're creating for you. And we also need to understand your personal priorities. You know, is it space, light, wall space for your art collection, a cellar for your wine, or using a salvaged Victorian stair? And those are all actual, true priorities on recent jobs. Um, get the brief right, and the design solutions follow. Um, and perhaps counterintuitively, the more complex the brief, the easier it is as a designer to respond to that. And it's very important to test your aspirations at an early stage to avoid costly mistakes and wasting money. Is, is your budget realistic for what you're trying to achieve? Is your timescale realistic? Um, is your concept technically possible? Um, and are you likely to get planning, con planning consent? Um, we can help you develop and test those strategic briefs at a very early stage. So then, the other big one, of course, when it works, please, thank you. Budget, um, obviously a priority for, for uh, clients and self-builders for understandable real reasons. It's probably the most expensive thing many of us get involved in, and it's a lot more involved than simply just buying a house. Um, so our advice is to assess the budget from day one, build up a cost plan um, throughout the design process, that way, um, there should be no surprises except for the initial shock of how much your project is really going to cost. Um, the design can then be adapted to your budget, or the budget can be adapted to the design. That's, that's your choice as a self-builder. A few top tips. Don't leave detailed design decisions like joinery details, staircases, light fittings until you're on site, um, even if there has been a, an allowance made in the contract. Definitely don't change your mind when you're on site. Um, as this will cause delays, disruption, and potential increase in costs. Do negotiate a price with a chosen and trusted contractor to give certainty about build costs. That's, that's our preferred method. Uh, but always have a contingency. You never know what's going to happen. Um, we deal with a lot with existing buildings, and we definitely always need a contingency. You can never guarantee what's going to happen when you start to open up an old stone building. Um, and use... 3D CAD building information modelling and building energy modelling to predict what it is you're going to get. 
Charlie mentioned the performance gap. You need some certainty about what you're achieving and what you're aiming for. And certainly I'd endorse the decision about Passive House uh, and the certainty of the performance that you get by doing it. So, oh, we're nearly there. If I, oh, back on. So, fundamentally, <coughs> carbon footprinting should inform all the design decisions. Uh, minimise your energy demand through fabric insulation and air tightness. Couple this with effective in ventilation. Use non-polluting construction materials. Um, use renewable energy. And use passive solar design where you can. And finally, use intelligent controls to make sure that you're getting the optimum performance out of your building. And if you want any more information from us, um, we've got a stand downstairs. Give us a call, drop us an email. Very happy to chat anytime. Thank you all very much.